welcome all to e content development center of malabar college of advanced studies wengera so in last class we discussed about gst goods and service tax we defined gst we defined and explained about the adoption of gst in our country we discussed about cgst stst and igst we also discussed why gst has been implemented in our country so today i'll give you an overview regarding the scope of goods and service tax the goods and service tax is applicable and extended to whole of india including jammu and kashmir so this is our taxable territory so any goods and services which is exchanged for a consideration within this taxable territory will be liable to pay goods and service tax we have defined goods and service tax as a comprehensive multi stage conception and destination based tax earlier when it was sales tax the tax was levied on the basis of origin now with the introduction of gst the tax is levied on the basis of consumption that is why gst is called as consumption based tax so here gst is taxable when the goods and services has been consumed so the taxable point of gst is the consumption point that is a point of taxation gst is applicable to all goods and as i have explained in another class gst is not applicable to three products one is alcohol consumption another one is tobacco products and the third one is specified petroleum products apart from this three products every other products are taxable under the scope of gst gst is taxable to all services except of a few that is need to be specified the scope of gst has been explained earlier that is what is cgst what is sgst and what is itgst now we are going to discuss about the need for gst in india why gst in india as i have earlier discussed before the coming of gst or before the introduction of gst in our country there was multiplicity of taxes a large number of multiple indirect taxes were followed in our country the were excise tax was there cst was there central uh, sales tax was there vat was there so because of all this ununiformity of these taxes gst has been introduced with the main aim for allowing for reduction of multiplicity of taxes and to bring the rationalize it earlier many of the services were not taxed under most of the indirect taxes but with the advent of gst the various service tax was introduced many taxes on services were introduced with the introduction of gst gst has allowed to avoid any distortion that is caused by the complex tax structure 160 countries in all over the world is following gst so by introducing gst in our country we are bringing uniformity and because of that itself one nation one tax one market is applicable in our country also various excise tax vat gst cst entry tax all have the cascading effect of taxation we were paying taxes on taxes multiplicity of taxes was there so the main need for gst arises at a point of avoiding this cascading effect of taxes with the advent of gst a new system of input tax credit that is the major uh, attraction of gst an input tax credit system was available this input tax credit helped in to avoid credit availability on interstate purchases and reduction in compliance requirement gst also help in avoiding double taxation to some extent the implementation of gst will also ensure that india is providing a tax regime that is almost similar to all over the rest of the world it also help in improving the international cost competitiveness of native goods and services it helps in avoiding and providing unbiased tax structure that is neutral to business and also geographical location this all are the need for implementing gst in our country now what is the objectives of gst the first objective of gst is nothing but to bring about one country one tax one market another objective is as i told earlier gst is consumption based tax 
Instead of origin based tax, GST is consumption based tax. So the objective of GST was to bring this consumption based tax to a country. This helped in uniform registration, payment and also helped in input tax credit. GST's another major objective is cascading effect of taxes and eliminating this cascading effect of indirect taxes. It helps in reducing the tax evasion and corruption and it also helps in increasing productivity. By introduction of GDP, GST in our country, it helps in increasing the GDP ratio and also the revenue surplus. It also increases in the tax regulation compliance and also reduces the economic distortion. By discussing the need, scope and objective of GST, we can simply say what are the advantages of CST. The first advantage is nothing but eliminating taxes on tax effect that is eliminating the cascading effect. By introducing GST, we have also introduced HSN code and SAC code. HSN's code is harmonized system of nomenclature and SAC is service accounting code. By introducing these two codes, we have introduced a uniform coding system for our products and services. By introducing GST, the customers are having a major advantage because they need to pay only small prices of the product when we are comparing with the earlier taxes. Earlier, if they were paying an amount of 6,500, by introducing GST, with the tax amount, they need to pay only around 6,000. So, the advantages to customers are huge. By introducing GST, it helps in easy compliance because the tax structure became easy, the uh, registration of tax became easy and it also helps in reducing the transaction cost and avoiding unnecessary wastages. GST also helped in the eliminating the multiplicity of taxation. It also went on to one point single tax. It also helps in reducing the average tax burden on the consumers and reducing the corruption. GST is beneficial to different stakeholders in different manners. To citizen, GST is beneficial because it is a simpler tax system. It is also helping them to reduce or decrease the price of the product because we are eliminating the cascading effect or GST is eliminating the cascading effect. By introducing GST, we also help to bring about uniform price throughout the country and it also helped in increasing the employment opportunity. Now what are the benefits to trade and interest? To trade, the major benefit is it avoided multiplicity of taxes and it helped in eliminating the cascading effect. The mitigation of cascading effect is completely eliminated and more efficient citizens are paying of tax especially for export. Through GST, we have created a common national market and a simple tax regime is another attractive factor of GST. Now to benefits to government. To government, the major benefit is it helped in boosting foreign investment. It also helped to give a support to Make in India campaign. It helped in boosting the export, manufacturing activity and also in increasing the employment opportunity. By through this, it helped in reducing the poverty and also increasing the GDP growth. With the introduction of GST, it helped in improving the overall investment climate in the country development of state. A uniform SGST and CGST is introduced in order to reduce the incentive for tax evasion. It helps in improving the revenue collection of the government and through this government was able to use the resources in a more efficient manner. These are the things we are discussing today in today's class. So next in next classes we will be discussing about the various terms related to GST. So today we discussed about the scope of GST, the products which are not introduced in GST, we discussed about the need for GST and also the advantages to GST and what are the different benefits GST is provided to different stakeholders. Thank you all.